in the south. Brought my compass today. The best Zerg in the world showing a very impressive defense in game number one. Here in game number two, we have two-time GSL champion. I am Misty. Dude, do you see the faces behind her at the top? I never noticed those. No. It's actually terrifying. Faces is actually seeing those. I'm gonna show pictures. you in I'm gonna show you in game three. All right. Faces above her in the back in the park, and they're scary. Alright. I'll be waiting. This guy is so good. One of the oldest pro gamers. Uh, in esports, not just StarCraft. Now in the North, our Blue Protoss, the underdog. He is. Find me. Well, Nesty, so good, Tasteless. I'm, yeah, just, I'm, so I'm good. just so impressed by him. Every move he makes, every step he takes, I'll be watching him. <laughs> Looks like another Forge Fast expansion. Hong kind of taking some pages out of the book of any pro, a player who just loves that. You know, he, he'll even Forge Fast expand on maps that you don't have to Forge Fast expand. This isn't a map you have to do that. It's not like a, yeah. a Taldirum Ultra where it's like, well, if you don't do that, you're either going to win really quickly or lose really quickly because you're doing something risky. Very true, Tasteless. Well, Nesty is going for a speed circling open and he will probably go from there into an expand. But the cool thing about a speed circling opening is that once you kill the probe against a Forge Fast expand like this, he is free to do whatever he wants. He can Baneling all in, Speedling all in, Roach all in, make two Roaches and expand. There's all sorts of neat ways that you can punish a Protoss like this, but Nest, he may opt for none. He may just go for a very safe expansion, just thinking he is far better. If I had to predict, I'd bet he's probably just going to go for a... A standard game. You never know. Nesty does know how to mix it up. Yeah. I think um, you know when you play against somebody like Hangen, he's got strats ready for each of these maps. But he's one of these players that really has some weird stuff you can't quite prepare for. Yeah. And that probe going to be taken out pretty quickly. He's not even going to be able to scout if there was an expo made. It's a scary moment for yeah. Provost when you lose that probe. And in fact, he sends another one out very smartly. Good move there by Hangen. You know, our players here at the GSL are getting better and better and better about that. It's so exciting to see StarCraft II continue to evolve yeah. and grow. And that's exactly what it's doing, man. I mean, it's you have to scout more. You have to check, is that hatchery there? Is he making a roach horn? Because that's going to affect how many cans you have, which is just gigantic. So this probe going to come down and just gain a huge amount of information. He's got a mineral in his hand. He might try to bribe the queen. <laughs> She only takes gold minerals, Tasteless. I know. She's a gold digger. <laughs> and look at that beautiful scout by Hongen. Gets to see the entire base, sees that there's no gasping mind even. Nesty did not even opt for um, a, a worker catch. Yep. You can, the citizens are asked when you grab them as they're going through the, uh, with the drones through there because he wants to get minerals so badly. This probe mm -hmm. will die, but your death probe was not in vain. No, that was the most worthwhile 55 minerals that uh, you could get. Yeah. They're like, what? It costs 50. No, he had minerals he had in minerals his hands. had minerals in his hand, man. Pay attention. Yeah. Jeez. Um, so, you know how this map is on top of buildings, Tasteless? I wonder if it ever gets loud and, like, some some old guy with a broom starts hitting the ceiling. Oh, my God, I was ceiling. about to say broom. Yeah. And then, you know, this nest, he's like, what? And he burrows a roach. And the guy's like, ah! Because a roach comes into his apartment and he tries to hit it with a broom. But the roach's regeneration heals quicker than the broom hurts him. So you oh never God. even know? He would be dead. That's actually the funny thing about this map. If you guys that haven't noticed this, this map is actually just on top of a building. <laughs> it's quite and then, You know, the building. background of the map, there's like little uh, little rooms with lights on. So there's like people like just like in their living room right now, you know, yeah. probably watching the GSL. And you know, it's I think it's one of those buildings where it has like that park up top, one of those really yeah. rich buildings. Imagine you go up there, you're like, oh, let's have a barbecue. You like bring a few it's friends like up there, one. you bring the girl that you like go up to the roof, and then you see suddenly a bunch of 2-1 roaches attacking a colossus, and you're like, ah! You run to the elevator as quick as you can, Tasteless. Yeah. Now, the third base is being taken. Hung and again going for the Stargate. That doesn't mean we're going to see a second Stargate, though. Like, I, when I said in the first game, I'm like, oh, he's going to go for the standard opener. Then he yeah. got the second Stargate. That's when it wasn't standard anymore. This may be him reverting back into uh, some more normalcy. And yeah. he's going to try to defeat an ST. I think you're right, Tastes. It should just be Void Ray with some Phoenixes, see if he can do some harassment. But Nesty already has that third base up. 
He's already at 49 drones against 38 probes. I am loving the super drone into double gas by Nesty to catch up on his gas. Too many people just are like, well, I'll just, you know, I'll just mine gas for a long time off of one. And it's actually, there's a lot of cool ways to balance it uh, to actually truly maximize your income. And Nesty is actually showing that off here just beautifully. And now we have more gateways. So this is, uh, again, a standard PVZ uh, opener. Although, you know, getting the void rate on this map and trying to actually take out the third base, it almost never works because the second and the third bases are just so close to each other. Now, the Phoenix is not coming in yet. He might want to just try to take out the support crawler first. Now he Ooh. gets it. Oh, nice cancel by Nesty. Yeah. Last second cancel. Cancel. Cancel right there. Like, cancel. Ah, the Queen's council, man. The counseling Nesty as to what to do. Tells him to shut up because he knows. That's right. Now, we do have another Phoenix on the way. And Honga just kind of teching up normally. Nest T just making a quadrillion drones. He's up to 66 already against 47 probes. You know, normally a, a fast expansion Protoss is a lot closer than that. But Nest T is really just waiting till the last seconds to make everything and pushing his drone numbers to places we've never seen a Zerg safely go. Here comes the Void Ray. He's just going to try to push these Zerglings away from the Zelnaga Watchtowers. You want Nesty to have as little preparation time as possible if he's going to be attacked. And the Spire is coming out now. And the Bailing Nest. Cool. We're going to see a very nice style out of Nesty. No more roaches. Tasteless. Sick of that stuff. And these Phoenixes see exactly what's going on. And this will be an interesting decision as he sees Whoa, both he the Bailing Nest and the, uh, and the Spire. I'm sorry, Tasteless. But I want to talk about the decision just for a moment. Is, is Hongan... What what tech route is he going to go? He's getting his Twilight Council now. He has his Robo. But will he continue on Phoenixes to deal with Mutas? Or will he go somewhere else with that? Yeah, you don't even need a lot of Phoenixes to make Mutalisks moving around the map basically impossible. Because Phoenixes can outrun anything. That's right. you got to be careful, though. It's pretty hard to uh, micro them at times. If oh, Mutas yeah. Mutas get close to them for one second, a nice big flock will just kill them off. The so. Phoenix is actually the unit that if, you, if it's moving, you can't make it not attack. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of funny. So funny. Um, you know, a, a, a little thing that I... A, a little opinion of mine, basically. Phoenixes only counter mutas for a little bit. There's like this weird little window where they actually counter mutas, so I'm not surprised we don't see Hongan making any more Phoenixes. I feel like, you know... Well, the more Phoenixes he makes, the easier it is for... Zerg to take a fourth base. Yeah, that's very true as well. Now, we do have some Corruptors on the way to help out against those Phoenixes. A lot of Lings if are these out. these Lings go in there, they might be trapped in there. Oh, be careful about nice. That. Wow, that was, that was nice really force field good. right there. If he, can, if he can actually do three more force fields and get his Zealots in there, and look at this, beautiful. Well, right, I should have let one of them come off so the Zealots could get like in there. It's like the slowest way to die. It's like just sentries. You're like, yeah. ah, tickles. In the meantime, these Zerglings are like doing a lot of damage to the third Nexus, but here go the Zerglings in the mineral line. Uh, Zealots being warped in. Yes, it does. Very nicely done there. Hongan saving everything, but Nesty doing a lot of damage to these Lings that basically don't cost him much. Oh, nice by Hongan. Another perfect block. Yeah. There were like three or four moments there where the Zerg could have gotten to the main, and that would have been huge. I have to say that attack was a failure for Nesty. That's all. All those Zerglings are... You know, almost cost nothing. That was yeah. a lot of Zerglings. That was a multitude of Zerglings that It was basically multiple multitudes of Zerglings. Yeah, indeed. Wow. Well mm. said, Artosis. Thanks. But, um, you know, that's actually kind of funny when we saw those sentries oh. just continuously killing those uh, those uh, Zerglings. It was like watching somebody get beat to death with a plastic bottle that's empty. <laughs> that's exactly what it was like. Yes. Oh, oh my god, god. we heard him scream as he died. Oh well, yeah, man. He was scared. Well, I guess you know what wins <laughs> with one void ray against two corruptors. The yep. question has now been answered. Uh Nest T is actually not going mutas, which is pretty neat. Uh, he is Oop. upgrading the attack, but yeah, basically Infester, Bane, Zergling. He has not even gotten drops or overlord speed, so he is actually going to rely upon fungal growths. And I am so That's excited. It's pretty to see good this. against Zealot uh, Archon. Yeah. I mean, they, oh, just, they just can't actually move. I mean, Zealots are pretty bad against Banelings, Tasteless. Uh, and, well, here we go, Nest T starting to move in here. It's nice. My God, Hungan's like up. having these like, MC like, pro force fields yeah. here. 
he definitely is, and uh, everything has been very badly hurt here. The Banelings rolling in, but Banelings, of course, against Archon's not uh -oh. so good. More and more Zerglings coming in. They do have plus two attack, and he may just go for the Nexus here, Taze, as that is a possibility. He can just bungle uh, the probes as well. And it looks like Nessie will lose those Infestors, but... I'm surprised. Oh, is he going to get the Nexus? He needs to target oh. it with the Infesteds, and he gets it. Oh, man. He's plus two Zerglings. Oh, my God. Just so good, getting into the main base. And Nesty, I have to say, is just ripping Kongan apart. It's well, 146 by to 109 right now, Taze. The Zerglings are everywhere. And meanwhile, Nesty's continuing to grow down here. Uh, at, the, at the bottom right side of the map with his fourth base. And here's the problem is that although Hongan can easily regain his third base, by then uh, Nesty will probably have a fifth. Yeah. Uh, Nessie definitely going to do that, Tasis. I mean, he, right now he's making a ton of Banelings, Roaches, getting a Hive, getting his plus two Flyer attack just in case for later. <laughs> it's it's totally awesome. Hongan is in a hard spot. But both players have nice economies right now. Uh, aside from the Nexus dying, he has plenty of probes for when that Nexus does come back online. I'm excited, though, man. I love the Infestor usage better than other Zergs that we've seen against Protoss. All right, I think this could potentially be a killing blow here. Oh, wow, that was actually a lot of Banelings into yeah. those Archons. Not cost-efficient at yeah, all, but... Yeah, the Zealots. I mean, right now, Nesty almost has twice the supply of Hongan. And once again, he always manages to destroy the army, and look at the timing of this. Exactly when the Nexus finished. Yep. That was, like, the exact perfect time to attack. Storm's going off on these Look roaches. He's dodging the storms perfectly. Hogan, uh, there's no way he's going to be able to secure that third nexus again. Uh, the roaches can just bleed right in there. More and more zealots being warped in. Not too useful against these roaches. They even have that plus one armor to really stop a lot of that zealot double attack damage. And Nesty just rallying up nonstop. Look at that minimap. Red streaks okay. of units. Uh, GG. Yeah. <laughs> GG. Damn, Nesty is sick. He's Dude. actually like a superhuman. He is a superhuman. Look at him. There he is. He actually is just ripping Hongan apart. This is so one-sided, it's not funny. Yeah. I can't believe how easy Nesty's making this look. For this first Nesty, game, Hongan's pretty aggressive uh, with this pretty unique uh, you know, way of moving in there with the Phoenixes, the Void Rays. I liked it. Uh, Nessie slapped it down and then overwhelmed him. Second game, Hongan tries to play a passive kind of macro style. Oh, nice. Before he was Professor T, he was Zerg Bong. That's right, man. That's pretty true. He was Zerg Bong in StarCraft 1 and StarCraft 2. He's Ness T, called Professor T. Best Zerg in the world by far. Um, you know, Hongan could come back, but that would be pretty, it's pretty difficult for me to kind of comprehend that that possibility. Mm. You know, I, I can't fathom it occurring. But the next map taste is I could definitely see a Hong and win on if he studied very carefully the ways of Trickster. I feel like Trickster has played Crossfire perfectly. And Yeah, uh, he's really good at that. I, I think this is a map that Hong and if I mean if Hong and can't win here, man, he can't win anywhere. This is the worst map for this matchup for Zerg. Yeah, uh, this is a tough map for Zerg. Uh, Zerg. I said Zerg like I'm Korean. Uh it's a tough map for Zerg because there's really, besides the bottom right expansion and your natural, the longer the game goes on, you're basically expanding towards the Protoss or the Terran. Yeah, I feel so like, it's like not only that, I feel you have to go mutas here. Absolutely, you can't go. You can't go ground units, man. There's this well, thing called gonna, the force field with all these go, little yeah, ramps. You can, you can go Zerglings to yeah. try to use the counterattack, but really, uh, Protoss can dictate so much of the map and what's going to happen and when they're going to yeah, engage yeah. based off of. Uh, yeah, so. it's mutas are a must. And then will if you this, know though. that they have to go mutas, then well, you can prepare for mutas, and then it's like Zerg's like ah. Uh, yeah, I think uh, you know, obviously Colossi are very strong here, but at the same time, I almost feel like well, the force fields are just so good on this map. Just go high Templar tech to start. Just we do may it. be going to a break in a little bit here. Yeah, we should be. Um, when our Korean commentators are ready, I need to go get my hair fixed because I have a little, a little faux hawk. But yeah, I look like a dolphin in captivity. You know, it's like it's like a show like kind of going like that. You know, I've been in, I've been in captivity too long. I need, need to get haircuts. out of Sea World. Well, let's go get haircuts tomorrow. All right, let's go. Haircuts in Street I'm gonna Fighter. I'm going to re-dye my hair. Street Fighter. Yeah. We'll have a little mandate. All right. All right. Sounds good. Mandate at the arcade. Let's go. <laughs> yep. Haircuts. Dye the hair. My hair's getting too long. You dye your hair again? Yep. 
Color it black. You want to bleach mine? <gasps> Do it, man. No. Do it, Artosis. Right here on the internet. Get the poll going. Should Artosis bleach his hair? No, he should not. <laughs> should he bleach his hair? I'm going to yeah. make him do it. Um, I don't know exactly what Hongan's supposed to be doing better. I know our job as well, analysts are supposed to be like, well, what I would have done is this. But I'm kind of looking at it and I'm like, let me say well, it in this way. Uh, Nestie is playing the best ZVP that I've seen. I'm looking same. for holes the entire game. And he's safe against everything that he sees. Like, he's actually he's figuring out pretty much what's going on. And being safe against anything that can come out of what he sees. Yeah. He's actually taking everything into account, perfectly balancing his economy, perfectly teching and upgrading. It's actually, it's astounding. It's beautiful. All right, we're going to have a five-minute break, so don't go too far away. We'll be right back here at the GSL. Miss Worldwide.